guys, me Seren, back with another car video with my afro. This hair is just growing like a weed. This hair is free. This hair is like, I am free. Free to be you and me. Um, I'm going to jump right into this car video because there's actually like a bunch of topics that I want to talk about and uh, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to get through all of them because, uh, well I might, I'm not going that far, but I might. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about super, super quick is fucking Pepsi Jenner. That's what I called her on Twitter and you guys thought it was like so funny. So Kendall Jenner is in hot water again for being a dumbass. She was on the cover of Vogue India um, this month. They're celebrating their 10 year anniversary. Um, so it's been 10 years that Vogue India has been in print. And so for the cover of their 10 year anniversary, they decided to put Kendall Jenner, AKA Pepsi Jenner, as she will forever be known from now on. They put Pepsi Jenner on the cover and people were, my mom is texting me. Stop texting me, mom, I'm driving. And people were immediately like, what the fuck is this? They were immediate, people were immediately like, what the fuck is this? Like, why for your 10 year anniversary would you choose to put this white girl and not an amazing Indian model or an Indian actress? A lot of people said, um, Priyanka, can't think of her last name. Priyanka, you guys know who I'm talking about. Um, she wore the trench coat that looked like Beyonce ring the alarm at the Met Gala on Monday. Some people said uh, Frida Pinto, because she's like having a moment um, in the show. Gidea, even though you guys have decided you don't like it. Um, so, but even it didn't even have to be a woman, could have been a man, could have been Dev Patel. A lot of people were saying like, oh, why not a dark skin, um, you know, South Asian, like a South Indian person with like dark skin for like representation. People were just like, why this white girl? Like, why this white girl? Like, again, when trying to capitalize off of some shit goes wrong, you know, like trying to capitalize off of, you know, being fucking Kendall Jenner, fucking, they trying to like push like this bitch is a supermodel, even though she has the presence of a fucking wet rag, this bitch is no supermodel in my opinion, but you know, trying to capitalize and like put her in all this shit and like she's, Bitch, you're making really bad decisions, Pepsi Jenner. You need a new PR person. You need a new agent. Whoever's helping you make these decisions is fucking up, girl, because you keep finding yourself in these dumbass situations. So I just wanted to talk about that real quick because I called her Pepsi Jenner and y'all thought that shit was mad funny. So moving on from that, uh, healthcare. So Republicans are trying to kill us all. They're really trying to dismantle Obamacare. They kind of took the first step towards dismantling Obamacare today by um, pushing their version of, of a health care plan excuse me, um, through the House. It won with only like two votes. It won by like two votes. 20 Republicans voted no. I think 217 voted yes. So when this fucking election comes in 2018, for fucking Congress seats, like, people talking about they gotta get these Republicans the fuck out of here. Like, basically, this healthcare plan, the, okay, so I wanna say that I don't think Obamacare is perfect by any means. I really don't like that under Obamacare, there's a penalty if you don't have health insurance. I kinda feel like that's penalizing poor people that don't have even like the bare minimum of money to like pay anything um because if you don't have health insurance in this like open market plan under obamacare you have to pay like anywhere between like 700 and 1700 dollars at the end of the year during like tax time which i don't like i think of instead of like forcing people to get health care by penalizing them like instead give people incentives right like if you get health care give them something i'll give them some money or give them a tax break you know give them something instead of saying like if you don't have health care we're gonna like force you to pay even more money because like nine times out of ten they probably don't have health care because they can't afford it so how does forcing them to pay more money like make sense but the way that they funded obamacare which did insure millions uh, of people was by taxing the rich. So for a long time, these rich fucking Republicans like fucking Donald Trump, who's really not even a Republican, but we're not even gonna get into that this video, have like wanted to get rid of Obamacare. Number one, because they're racist and they just don't want, they just wanna repeal everything Obama has done, period. But number two, because what funds, funds Obamacare is 
taxes. Um, so they want to cut taxes for the wealthy and put that money back in their pockets. And that's basically what they're doing with this health care plan. They've dismantled key uh, portions of Obamacare. They're cutting Medicaid. They're cutting funding to Planned Parenthood. Um, they're just like, they're they're making it so that uh, insurance companies don't have to take you if you have a pre-existing condition. A pre-existing condition under these this new law could be defined as if you have a baby, uh, like if you get pregnant, um, if you want to get an abortion, if you need birth control, you know, all these, if you're, if you're a woman of any kind, there's a pre-existing condition apparently. So um, I just wanted to tell a quick story, a quick personal healthcare story about when I was living in New York City when I was fresh out of college and I was extremely poor and I did not have health insurance. My first job out of college, I was working for Bank of America. I feel like I've talked about this before on this channel, but my first job out of college, I was working for Bank of America. I was working like 35 to 38 hours a week, something like that. I think I was working 35 hours a week because this Bank of America was closed on Saturdays and Sundays. It was only open Monday through Friday, and I think I was working like seven hours a day, right? Like eight hours with an hour-long break or, or so, you know, something like that. So it like, it like worked out to like 35 to 38 hours. Full-time is 40 hours. And so if you were not full, and if you were not full-time, you did not get health insurance. So I was not getting health insurance for Bank of America because technically I was only working part-time. And what ended up happening, oops, here comes an ambulance. And what ended up happening was I was making like, I don't even know, a thousand, $12,000 a month, something like that. I was living in a room in Harlem um, that was like maybe $400 a month. And I was poor. Like, I was poor. Like, I was one of those people that was like, when you hear about like, oh, so people live below the poverty line. And like, I was one of those people like living below the poverty line in one of the most expensive cities in the world. Um, now, now I, we were like super young, you know, like tw 20 years old, 21 years old. Everyone I knew was poor. No one I knew could find a job. So everybody was working like waitressing gigs and Bank of America gigs and random, you know, random ass fucking jobs, front receptionist at a den dental office, like all types of shit. And we were like all poor and we was just like all finding ways to make our money stretch. Like I look back at that time, like I don't even know how niggas motherfucking survived. Like how do we not starve to death? I couldn't tell you, but I had no health insurance. And even under like Obamacare and, and, and like that market, I most likely still would not have been able to even afford like one of those plans because I was poor like I was poor like I was eating McDonald's every day dollar menu because that was all I could afford which is also why it really fucking annoys the shit out of me, out of me when people are like I don't understand like why poor people like eat so bad and they like eat all this junk food and like and then they say that they eat the junk food because the junk food is cheaper but like it only costs 69 cents for a banana like shut the fuck up like niggas be poor out here like <laughs> one banana is not gonna fucking feed you for like a whole entire week but like five dollars worth of mcdonald's probably will if that's all you can afford but anyways getting off topic so when I was super poor and I didn't have health insurance and there was no Obamacare at this time, there was no Trump care, there was no nothing, I was basically living off of like going to get checkups at Planned Parenthood, which is why it always kills me when people are like, Planned Parenthood is just like an abortion factory and da 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 da. Like, Planned Parenthood is not just an abortion factory. Like, tons of women that have no other options go there to get medical attention, to get pap smears, to get checkups, to get all the things that they need to stay healthy. Like, I used to go to Planned Parenthood, which was free, free, 100% free through funding and through donations. And that was where I used to get my OBGYN appointments done. Again, pap smears, mammograms to check for breast cancer. And I, for years, for years. And every time I tried, I went to plan, go to Planned Parenthood, I had to like walk through people like protesting and picketing, like all types of shit. Like that shit is very real for a lot of people. And like, I'm one of those people. So like, again, when you like read about this type of stuff in the news, this is not just like nameless, faceless people. All of you guys that watch me, like I, for a long time was one of those people like when I had to go to the doctor I would like go to the CVS minute clinic and get like a checkup from like CVS when I needed to go to like the dentist there was like a dentist around my way in the hood 
there's there's like a few in Harlem and in Washington Heights that like they don't take insurance because like nobody has insurance because like everybody's poor or like everybody's an illegal immigrant or you know whatever so you just like pay money out of pocket and and they like check your teeth and shit for like 50 75 dollars this is the way that people are really living right this is the way that people are really for real living in this country like for real so and it's just like so atrocious and despicable and just fucking vile that for the millions of people that were able to get insured under obamacare like that now they're really trying to like take that shit away from people and people will fucking die people will get sick they will die like they will be uninsured and like and 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 even when you're uninsured even if you find ways around it like i did you're always like living in this fear of like what if i get hurt what if i get really sick what if i break a bone like what if you know what if i get a really bad cavity or something and i and i can't just like get by on like $50 $50 to $100 checkups and I have to have like some serious dental work done and I just don't have the money because I make $1,000 a month from fucking Bank of America where I work part time, you know, like that's the reality, right? And it, it's just disgusting. It's just disgu- it's disgusting and despicable what these people are fucking trying to do. It's horrible. It's awful. And they included an exemption in their own bill so that they, the like the lawmakers, the Republicans and like the government officials don't have to like get their health insurance from the bill, right? So it's like even they know this bill is some shit. It's a money grab. It's purely designed to cut these taxes from people that are already wealthy. That's my little health care, my little health care rant. Like just as someone that has like like been so poor, like a super young poor person with like all this student loan debt and like no health insurance and like no options that like these people are are criminals this is criminal right so health care so last but not least i want to talk about miley fucking cyrus I, like i don't even know where to start i did a rant video on miley cyrus way back when in like 2014 one of my early 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 videos when this bitch said she invented the nene that shit really annoyed the shit out of me and i just went off i was like this fucking bitch all she does is like take 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 culturally appropriate like she is a culture vulture she is a prime example of like the parasitic nature of white people how they like latch on to shit and then they like suck it dry and then when they've sucked it dry and they're done with it they discard it and they move on that is a parasite that is the way a fucking parasite operates right like it latches on it sucks the host dry of all the nutrients and then it lets go of the fucking shell and then it goes like the motherfucking face huggers an alien bitch like latch onto your face and kill you right so this bitch trying to make her little comeback second or third whatever fucking comeback has decided she's like done with the black culture shit she's done with the rap she's done with the hip-hop she's done with the bangers she's done with the nene she's done with the fucking twerking and blah 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 and all that shit and i just want to say this is a prime example of why we talk about cultural appropriation because this is exactly what all these bitches do. Katy Perry, who now wants to call herself her dumbass a fucking activist. Like, bitch, just this side of two years ago, you was fucking dressed up in yellow face talking about you a geisha. And a year after that, you had green corn roast in your hair and fucking grills in your mouth eating watermelon, which is fucking offensive as fuck. Eating watermelon in videos talking about Jessica thought this and that. Now you want to talk about some you a motherfucking activist even though your parents voted for Trump. Like like listen. All this all this jumping around from culture to culture and picking shit up and putting shit down, putting black culture and shit on and taking it on and off like it's a motherfucking coat. I said the same thing about motherfucking Amethyst Kelly, aka Iffy, motherfucking Azalea, Igloo Australia, Australian Voldemort, whatever you want to call her. The issue is that cultural appropriation is really really for these white people flexing the shit out of your white privilege right rachel fucking dolezal same thing i can be whatever i want i'm white gotta be right i can be whatever i want i can even be black if i decide i want to be black today i can do whatever i want and because i am white i have the privilege of at any moment taking all this shit off and going back to being white and not associating myself with this shit anymore whenever i 
wants. I can fucking rich, like going back to Rachel Dolezal, she could wash that spray tan off her face. She could snatch that weave out of her hair. She can go back to being motherfucking Rachel Sue, Rachel Katie, whatever y'all motherfuckers want to call her at any moment. Miley Cyrus, prime fucking example of that. People said, bitch, you're culturally appropriating. And not only are you culturally appropriating, but like the actual like act of what you're doing is offensive you're drawing on offensive stereotypes and your idea of blackness this caricature of blackness and of black american culture and you're like patting your fucking butt to make this like exaggerated fucking shape cough sarah bartman cough like this you know like this exaggerated shape and you and you're and you're like you know i want an urban sound for my album you know i want to i want to it's, it's just it's a story as old as time i want to pick up blackness to be cool and urban and edgy and to hold on to my relevance and to keep my bullshit ass flopping ass motherfucking career going and i'm gonna like i'm gonna just play into all these stereotypes to like keep the attention on me and to like play myself up as this edgy ass pop star christina Galera did the same thing a motherfucking ex tina did the same exact thing uh now that that dirty album was a great album but she did the same exact thing like i'm gonna this is what these white girls do i'm gonna like latch on to this idea of blackness as a way to be fucking cool marky mark and the funky bunch motherfucking mark Wahlberg, who was justin bieber before justin bieber i'm gonna wear the backwards caps and i'm gonna wear the jerseys and i'm gonna like grab on my nuts and i'm gonna wear gold chains and i'm gonna put on this caricature of what i think black men are and then when i'm done with it and i decide i want to go be a respectable white guy again and make movies i'm gonna drop this shit like a bad habit because i'm actually white and i have the privilege to do that and when people say like, oh, but like, why does it matter? Like, this is why it matters. Because it is a, a flex of racist white privilege. It is a flex of the privilege that white people have in a system of racism, white supremacy that allows them to do whatever they want. And the rest of us don't have that privilege. We can't do that. Just like I said in my Iggy Azalea video, she can go on stage at Good Morning America because number one, she's a non-threatening white girl. No matter what she says, no matter how many black scents this bitch puts on, pussy this, pussy that, first thing first, I'm the realest. And da, 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 da. No matter how she dresses, no matter how much fucking makeup she puts on, no matter how many Nicki Minaj inspired fucking ponytails and outfits this bitch wears and fingernails and this and that, at the end of the day, you can go sit on the Good Morning America couch and be a cute white girl with an Australian accent. And you don't have to deal with any of the negative stereotypes types and associations that come along with being actually black the type of shit that gets us killed right like the type of shit that gets us murdered in the streets right like miley cyrus can say and do whatever she wants without getting labeled an angry black woman like nick like fucking Nicki minaj who miley tried to come for right because Nicki said oh you want to be down with black culture you want to be bringing out all these niggas in your music videos you want to have these black girl dancers twerking you want to talk about how you invented the twerk and you invented the nay nay and you did this and you did that you saw down with the culture but you can't say nothing about black lives matter but you can't say nothing about real shit that is affecting people and the, and the first thing miley did when she was done with black culture was come out with a billboard interview today because now she's like white again so she's like doing country music again she's like grown her hair out she's where she's not bleaching it anymore it's like brown again and she's wearing like you know white prairie dresses and you know she's doing like a like a cute taylor swift country music impersonation and she comes out with this billboard interview talking about you know oh i i've, I've outgrown hip-hop you know like some i've matured i've moved past it i'm clean and sober so right there associating hip-hop with being immature with drugs with alcohol you know oh and and the misogyny got to be too much for me and all this suck my dick and ride on my cock and people on twitter were like bitch rappers don't even say cock because black people don't even say cock like bitch what are you talking about you're just making shit up but it's just like we can talk about the misogyny in hip-hop most definitely sure we can talk about the misogyny in hip-hop but it's like how are you aware of the misogyny in hip-hop and now you feel like you're in a place where you can critique that but you are not gonna talk about your own fucking racism your own cultural appropriation your own place of privilege in being able to use utilize this culture that you are now talking down on and shaming and distancing yourself from because you have the privilege to do that as a white woman you get what i'm saying like you're a fucking fraud you're a fucking clown you're a fucking buffoon and this bitch is a goddamn racist like this is racist what you're doing is racist and this again goes back to this idea of white women as being able to recognize sexism as being able to recognize misogyny as being able to recognize the patriarchy but just like hop skip 
and jump in over the racism just oh like I'm an activist and I'm a feminist and I went to the women's march and power for women and this and that but like no awareness no accountability for her actions of picking up and putting down culture no awareness and accountability for her actions of utilizing racist stereotypes in her fucking act and in her performances and in her music and in her fucking albums no accountability and no awareness for the flexing of white privilege to even be able to hop in and out of motherfucking lanes that don't belong to you and and just like everything that she said about like black culture was like oh like that shit is like that shit is no like that shit's gross that shit's whack like these same exact fucking stereotypes that you were literally using like a fucking like like a tissue that you blew your nose in and then you crumbled it up and threw it threw it away you used it while it had its use you played black for a little while and now you get to go be a cute white girl again that is why i don't see it for any of these hoes adele i know y'all love adele to death y'all know i don't like adele at any moment adele can decide i don't want to make this blue-eyed motherfucking soul anymore i'm gonna go make cute pop hits and she can do that megan trainer she can do that Again, Iggy Azalea, she can do that. Katy Perry, she can do that. These people use this shit while it's hot because that's all black people are, something to be used. That is all black American culture is, something to be used. Something to be used up, something to be consumed, and then something to be discarded. And not only discarded, but like shamed and talked about like as if it's not shit. Like, bitch, you really have a career right now, literally, because you use that shit to keep you relevant. And literally, white artists have been doing this for generations when they want to break out of a pop mold a country mold when they want to fucking be seen as cool when they want to be fucking seen as edgy when they want to fucking just like oh move in a certain direction i'm gonna like put on the blackness but then when i want to be white i could take it off again and that's why privilege we can never stop being black we can never stop being associated with the with the negative stereotypes and stigmas that come across that come with being black we can never stop being the victims of racism here in the united states as well as worldwide we can never stop being black we cannot hop into white culture and now all of a sudden we're white and it's fine and hop back out and that's why i will never give none of these hoes a pass ever because they all do the exact same thing so every time people say oh it's not a big deal i don't understand what's the point and i also talked in my pepsi video about cultural capital this is cultural capital these people use our black american cultural capital to make money to put out these records to go you know to to go on these tours and then when they're done they discard us Nah, i'm not here for that shit not here for it and these hoes keep on doing it and it's racist and it's a flex of racist white privilege so those were the three things that i wanted to talk about um healthcare pepsi jenner miley cyrus car video uh, still planning on getting up a Solange video. Um, hopefully tomorrow, but if not tomorrow, maybe Sunday or something like that. I don't know. We'll figure it out. So yeah, I just wanted to get this one up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know, of course, what you guys think in the comments. See you guys next time. Food for thought as always. Peace.